Well, hello and welcome to Warsaw. This week we are exploring the Polish capital. We've already been here a few days and it has been amazing. It's been such a pleasant surprise and unlike any part of Europe we've traveled in so far. So yeah, this week we're going to be highlighting 25 things to do around the city and we're excited to show you what it's all about. This was our first trip to Poland and we dove into the capital headfirst. While our travels may have started in the charming old town, it wasn't long before we discovered that Warsaw has a cool, artsy side. We visited bright neon museums in the art district, shopped in boutiques selling Soviet chic apparel, and got to experience the capital's legendary nightlife. In many ways, it was a whirlwind visit, but it was also a fun introduction that made us curious to discover more of Poland in our future travels. The following video will highlight 25 things to do in Warsaw and give you a glimpse into this up-and-coming capital. Right now we're visiting Castle Square, a very popular area for both tourists and locals alike. Last night we visited and it was absolutely packed. And this morning there's not as many people so it's really cool to get the two different contrasts. Walking around the old town is a fascinating experience because almost all of what you see is new even if it looks authentic. Most of the city was razed to the ground after the Second World War and that makes for a rather surreal visit. So up next we are about to enter Warsaw's Royal Castle which used to be home to the Polish monarchy. Of course Poland hasn't had a monarchy for a really long time but this still remains a historical building so we're going to go in and take a look. First full day here in Poland. This week we're visiting Warsaw and that means we have to try some traditional Polish food. Today we are going for the national dish. We're going to be eating pierogies for lunch. So we've placed our order and now we're waiting for it to arrive. So if you've never tried pierogies before, they're stuffed dumpling. Typically they're steamed and then they're fried and they come in a variety of different flavors. We've ordered meat and cheese ones, but you can also get dessert pierogies as well. When we first ordered our pierogi, we were surprised that restaurants only served five or six to a plate. It seemed like a small meal at first glance, but we soon learned that looks can be deceiving and that pierogi are incredibly filling. The Neon Museum is located in Soho Factory, Praga, and it is the place to learn about Cold War Neon. It's definitely one of the most interesting museums we've ever set foot in. During our trip, we joined Adventure Warsaw for a historical tour of the city. Our ride was a bubblegum pink Nisa van from the Soviet days, and together with her guide, we cruised the city in style while uncovering a bit of the past and learning how it has shaped the present day city. Milk bars are a bit of a misnomer because you don't go there to drink milk nor do you go there to drink alcohol. You can, however, try dairy-based Polish dishes in a cafeteria-like setting, including pink beetroot soup. So today seems like a great day to be out on the water. The sun is out, the weather is great. So we're gonna take a little boat cruise down the Vistula River. The water levels were particularly low when we visited during the summer months. So our leisurely boat ride required a little bit of punting. The boat trip was a fun way to see Warsaw's riverside beaches and gaze at the old town off in the distance. So the sun is going down and that means we are going to go out and experience Warsaw's nightlife. We've actually signed up to do a pub crawl, so we'll see how that goes. We've had our nap, we have energy, and let's go check it out. You, I need a new guy to be fired. And I know you, come on in. <laughs> pub crawl! So if there's one building that dominates the skyline here in Warsaw, it's the Palace of Culture and Science, which you can see right here behind me. This was built in the 1950s and it was a gift from the Soviet Union. And we're gonna go inside because apparently on the 30th floor, there's an observation deck and you get some great views of the city. 
The sentiment towards the Palace of Culture and Science is very mixed. There are those who see beauty in this historical landmark and others who despise the Soviet regime that it once stood for. If you are interested in visiting this structure, there are tours that take you behind closed doors before going up to the observation deck for views of the city below. The Chopin Museum is another museum to consider visiting. It holds an extensive collection of manuscripts, letters and paintings that document the composer's life. When we weren't sampling Polish food in restaurants, we were learning to make pierogi by hand. We ended up taking a cooking class with Polish Your Cooking, where we learned to make pierogi with various fillings including ground beef and onions, cheese and potatoes, and strawberries for dessert. It took us about three hours to prepare all the food, and then we devoured it in a matter of minutes. Lezinki Park is the largest park in Warsaw, and the name means baths, thanks to the bathing pavilion that was located on these very grounds. The park is also part of the Royal Route, which was a communication route that ran southward from the old town back in the days when snail mail was the only way to get urgent messages across. The museum sits on the site of the former Warsaw Ghetto, and it documents the history of Polish Jews in a chronological timeline. The exhibit starts out with the traveling merchants that came to Poland during the medieval period, and it spans several hundred years through to the Holocaust and the post-war years. It is lunchtime over here and we are in Warsaw's old town. Today we are going to be sampling something called bigos, which is a traditional Polish dish and it consists of different meats and cabbage. So we've just ordered our food and now we're waiting for it to get here. All right, so my lunch has arrived. Lo and behold, here is my bigos. And this may look like a small portion, but that's just because I ordered it as an appetizer. And you can normally get it in a bread bowl or you can get it with a side of potatoes. I got some sliced bread here in the basket, so I'm gonna be trying that. And also, I've learned that no two bigos recipes are the same. It's basically just a mix of different cuts of meat and you can have beef, veal, pork, venison, rabbit, whatever you wanna throw in there, it works. This is a type of dish you'd eat during the winter months, but if you look hard enough, you'll be able to find it on some restaurant menus year-round. Another cool museum to visit is the Life Under Communism Museum. It may be small, but the way it's been set up will make you feel like you've traveled back through time. Not only will you visit rooms styled the way the average home would have looked during the Soviet period, but they also have posters, board games, music, and fashion from the same time. For a look at a very unique garden, you can swing by the rooftop gardens at the Warsaw University Library. It's a beautiful place and we notice more than one student napping there. So right now we are standing in front of St. Anne's Church, which is located here in the historic center of Warsaw. And it looks like a pretty happening place. We were here earlier in the morning where they were having mass. Now we're seeing a whole bunch of people in really fancy outfits, so it looks like there may be a wedding taking place. And they also hold concerts during the noon hour. The Barbican is a red brick fortification that once encircled Warsaw. These days, the city has expanded well beyond the fortification's limits, but it still remains one of the city's top attractions. You'll find lots of artists and buskers along the main gates, and you can also enjoy some scenic views of the city by walking along the length of the wall. Just a short walk from Castle Square, you'll find the Presidential Palace, which we couldn't go into but look pretty nice from the outside. Alright, so it is time for dessert and next up we've ordered some rurki, which apparently is a torpedo dessert. And now, when I was reading about these online, it said that it's supposed to be a buttery, flaky pastry that's filled with cream. But as you can see, this is more like a wafer. Looks a bit harder to me. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Oh, it's crumbly. Mm. 
Oh yeah. It's almost like an ice cream cone that's been filled with cream. And also, the cream isn't sweet. Um, they either forgot to add sugar or they just like their cream very natural. So it's a whipped cream, but not not sweet at all. It must be healthy for you. Healthy dessert? <laughs> the Warsaw Uprising Museum is dedicated to the Warsaw Uprising of 1944 led by the Polish Resistance Army. The museum chronicles the 63 days of the uprising as Poles fought against Germans. The Copernicus Science Center is an interactive learning center where you can discover science through experiments. While we were probably a little bit too old for the exhibits, we can see how this would be a fun place for children. If you're in town during the summer months and over the weekend, I would also suggest checking out the old town at night. There is live music, people are out enjoying a cool evening stroll, and the restaurants are packed. It's a really fun atmosphere. For the football lovers, there's the option of catching a match at the National Stadium, or perhaps a concert if it's not football season. Well, what do you have there? So we're at the airport, but we couldn't leave without having this one last Polish sweet treat. This is Ponchuk, and it's basically like a donut, but it apparently has some kind of like jam inside. This is our first time to try it, so mm. quite excited. Feet. It's actually seeping out onto my finger here. <laughs> what kind of filling do you think that is? Yeah, kind of like a maybe a strawberry type of jam, sort of mm. taste like that. That looks good, and it's covered in icing with little almonds on top. That looks delicious. We came to Warsaw with little to no expectations, and the city completely surprised us. Our week in the capital was spent sampling Polish cuisine, learning about the city's past through museums and historical tours, and also dabbling in a bit of the nightlife. Warsaw is quickly rising through the ranks, and we think it won't be long before travelers are flocking en masse. So if you're planning a trip to Poland, don't skip over the capital because there is more to Warsaw than meets the eye. So it is our first full day here in Poland. This week we're visiting Warsaw and that means we have to try some traditional Polish food. Today we are going for the national dish. We're going to be eating pierogies for lunch. So we've placed our order and now we're waiting for it to arrive. So if you've never tried pierogies before, they're stuffed dumpling. Typically they're steamed and then they're fried and they come in a variety of different flavors. We've ordered meat and cheese ones, but you can also get dessert pierogies as well. Look what's arrived. I know, my lunch is finally here, so I'm going to be having the cheese pierogies, and they also come with bacon, so this looks pretty good to Let's me. Let's get a shot of that bacon. I'm pretty hungry. Here's the bacon. Yeah. Ooh la la. Let's take a bite. Mm. That is delicious. Wow. I'm trying to figure out what kind of cheese it is, but... Ricotta maybe? I was just gonna say ricotta. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a softer cheese and there's a car making noise behind us, but... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> That's how it goes. Um, yeah, so it's really good. Actually, we tried pierogi last night for dinner, but we didn't film it. And it was slightly different. Those had been boiled and pan fried, but the pierogies we're having today are simply boiled. So a little bit different, and also last night's pierogies were served with sour cream and pickles, and these just came with bacon. So I guess there's a few different variations around the city. Okay, so tell us about your pierogies. Which are you having? I'm having the meat ones, and take a look at this. They're absolutely stuffed with meat. Mm. When I've had pierogies in Canada, which you can also pick up, they're mostly heavy on the outer layer, and there's not a lot of uh, filling inside. But this is the exact opposite. Like these are. Absolutely stuffed. Can't wait to try them. Let's take the first bite here. Like, this is just the perfect comfort food. Like, it's really hot, 
and it's the summer right now, but this is the kind of food that would be amazing to have in the winter. So like Sam was saying, this is quite a hearty and heavy meal and that's because originally this was meant to be peasant food. So you wanted something that was going to fill you up and hold you throughout the day as you toiled away on the fields. So yeah, I mean it looks like a small portion when the plate first came, we only saw five dumplings and it's like, well, maybe I'll be hungry after this. But once no you way. start eating, it fills you up right away. We were so full last night from our first pierogi mm. meal. <laughs> quite impressed by these Polish pierogies, so tell us, what sets them apart from the Canadian ones? You better believe it. What sets them apart is that they're handmade and that they are so stuffed with filling inside. I'm used to having kind of the crappy frozen ones that are that you buy in Canada and these are like a hundred times better. So if you're looking to order pierogies, you can usually get these at a pub or a restaurant. It's the type of item that shows up on almost every single menu. And in terms of price point, we paid about 10 euros and that included two plates of pierogies and Sam's beer. So pretty and good I deal. And I had two of them and you also had yeah. a water as well. Yeah, so pretty good deal if you ask me. So it is lunchtime over here and we are in Warsaw's Old Town. Today we are going to be sampling something called bigos, which is a traditional Polish dish and it consists of different meats and cabbage. So we've just ordered our food and now we're waiting for it to get here. So tell us the tale of how we learned about bigos. So while we were traveling on the train from Berlin to Warsaw, we met this Polish guy who spent a lot of time in the US. And basically he was raving about this dish, this bigos, this hunter stew. So this is the reason why we're trying it, a recommendation from a uh, local basically. lunch has arrived lo and behold here is my bigos and this may look like a small portion but that's just because I ordered it as an appetizer and you can normally get it in a bread bowl or you can get it with a side of potatoes I got some sliced bread here in the basket so I'm gonna be trying that and also I've learned that no two bigos recipes are the same it's basically just a mix of different cuts of meat and you can have beef veal pork venison rabbit Whatever you want to throw in there, it works. So I've got a nice forkful of cabbage and some kind of meat. Let's see if I can decipher what it is. Mm. Pardon? That's really good. The cabbage, it almost tastes a little bit fermented, but it's not as strong as sauerkraut. And the meat, I think it might be beef. It's a familiar flavor. So time for your first forkful. Yeah! Yeah, you're right, that's really good. I like that it has a bit of a, a sour taste. That's really appealing for me. And what's cool about bigos is that it literally means big mess, big confusion. And so if you look down here, that's exactly what it looks like. It just looks like a hodgepodge of all kinds of different things, vegetables, meats, cabbage, and that's exactly what Bigos is. So apparently bigos is the kind of dish that you can refrigerate and then reheat and that's meant to make the flavors a lot stronger and it's also the kind of dish that keeps on giving. So that means if you start running low you just add some cabbage, add some meat and make it last for a week. Alrighty, so that was delicious. What's the price point for the hunter stew? So if you want to pick up the hunter stew while you're in Poland, you can expect to pay the equivalent of five to seven euros. And definitely we recommend it. It's delicious and it's very hearty and it's just an awesome meal. Alright, so it is time for dessert and next up we've ordered some rurki which apparently is a torpedo dessert. And now, when I was reading about these online, it said that it's supposed to be a buttery, flaky pastry that's filled with cream. 
but as you can see this is more like a wafer looks a bit harder to me uh, so yeah we're gonna try it I'm gonna try it oh, it's crumbly mm. oh yeah it's almost like an ice cream cone that's been filled with cream and also the cream isn't sweet um they either forgot to add sugar or they just like their cream very natural so it's a whipped cream but not not sweet at all it must be healthy for you healthy dessert <laughs> apparently the rookie originated from turkey and bulgaria but this is obviously the polish kind and i think what makes a difference is that the outer layer is more like a crispy wafer mm -hmm. kind of like a wafer cookie so my turn to try it Yeah, it's pretty good. You're right, the, the cream isn't overly sweet, but it's very thick, and you can tell that it's a good quality. So, not our most super informative video, but that is all I know about the Ruruki. Really nice treat, fun street food snack that you can just pick up in the center of town. And in terms of price point, we paid the equivalent of a euro for these two little rolls. So, pretty affordable and pretty tasty.